Okay, in this video we're going to look at an application of this following pretty big theorem that we proved in a previous video. So just to go over it quickly, so if we have a differential operator which is of the form x squared, a quadratic polynomial, y double prime, x, another quadratic polynomial, y prime, and then finally a quadratic polynomial times y, where we set these pi's be equal to polynomials in R depending on the coefficients up here and these coefficients a and r based on this recursion which has to do with these polynomials then this power series well it's not quite a power series it's offset by r which we think of initially as a formal variable has the property that if we act on it with this differential operator we get the polynomial p0 evaluated at r times x to the r and so that leads us to see that if r1 and r2 are roots of this polynomial then in fact we get a solution to this differential equation defined by the operator which is l0 equals y and furthermore if they're real solutions with r1 minus r2 not an integer, then we actually get linearly independent solutions. In other words, we have a fundamental set of solutions to this differential equation. Okay, good. So this is obviously an example of such a differential equation. We have x squared, a quadratic polynomial, and so on and so forth. This is a slight simplification in that we don't have a linear part in each of these polynomials. So we'll see that that will cause us to be able to um, find a nicer solution at the end. Okay, good. So now that we have this, let's write down the polynomials P0, P1, and P2. So uh, P0 of R in this case will be given by uh, 2R, R minus 1, plus R minus 1. Okay, so notice we get that from this coefficient, this coefficient, and this coefficient plugged in here based on this formula here. Okay, good. And then I'll skip right to factoring this polynomial. I'll let you fill in the details. This factors into r minus 1, 2r plus 1, which tells us we have roots. r1 equals 1, and r2 equals negative half. And then looking back at our theorem, since those are real numbers and they do not differ by an integer, that means those will provide us with two linearly independent solutions to this differential equation. Okay, good. Now next, let's look at uh, P1 of R, but that's obviously zero because P1 of R is built off of the linear terms in each of these polynomials. Okay, great. And so next, P2 of R. So we can write that down. So that's built off of the quadratic terms in each of these polynomials. So in this case, we have R times R minus 1 plus R minus 1. Okay, good. And then um, you can notice that this uh, factors like R minus 1, R plus 1. Okay, great. And now what we're going to do is plug everything into this recursion and see what happens. So in general, for general R, we'll look back at specific R um, in just a second. But for general R, we have A0 of R equals 1. So we can always set that because we have a homogeneous differential equation and this is like our free variable. And then we have A1 of R equals negative P1 of R plus 1. Uh, sorry, it's P1 of R divided by P0 of R plus 1, but P1 is 0, so that means the A1 coefficient is always 0. And then finally, we have A n of R. So notice A n depends on P1 and P2. We know P1 is 0, so that's going to cancel, and so that adds some simplification here. Here we have minus n plus R plus, sorry, n plus R minus 3. Good. And then uh, next we have n plus r minus 1. And this is going to be over um, n plus r minus 1. And then finally, uh, 2n plus 2r plus 1. And we gain that from these polynomials p0 and p2. So, uh, now we can cancel this, and I uh, forgot an a n term here, so the n uh, 
sorry, a n minus two. So the a n term depends on the a n minus two term. So we've canceled these off, and notice that's just going to give us minus n plus r minus three over two n plus two r plus one. Okay, so now that we have our, our recursion in general, we'll look at what's going on with these uh, two roots. So I'll clean up the chalkboard and then we'll get to it. <laughs> Okay, so now I've cleaned up the board and I'm ready to look at the case where uh, we have r equals one. In other words, we're looking at our first root. So r1 equals one. Okay, great. And let's just recall that in this case, our uh, solution will be of the form um, yx comma one, which is the sum n equals zero to infinity of a n one x to the n plus one. Good, and that's based off of this down here. Okay, so fantastic. Notice we have a naught of r is one, a one of r is zero, and then we have this recursion going up here. So let's calculate the next term. So we have a two of r. So notice that means, sorry, a two of one. So that means we're gonna plug n equals two, r equals one. So that's gonna give us two plus one minus three over, four plus two plus one, and then this is gonna be times a n minus two, which is a zero, which is one. But notice we get zero here because of this term in the numerator. So we get zero for a two, but now let's look at our recursion. A four can be written as a constant multiple of a two, which is zero. A uh, six can be written as a constant multiple of a four, which is zero. So what that tells us is that a two equals a four equals a six. Everything else equals zero. And furthermore, we can say the same thing about a3. So a1 equals a3 equals a5 equals, so all of those equal zero. And that's because a1 was zero from a previous calculation. Okay, so that's good. So now what we notice is that this sum will collapse to the n equals zero term, and the n equals zero term is attached to x to the zero plus one, in other words, x to the one. So that means we get our solution, uh, y1, which is y of x1, is just x. Good, and that's from plugging all those coefficients in. And now um, you can check that this does satisfy this differential equation. So notice the second derivative of x is zero, so that goes away, <clears throat> and then the first derivative of x is one, and notice um, those two will obviously cancel in this case. Okay, good, so I'm gonna clean up the board, and then after I clean up the board, we're gonna look at uh, the next root. Okay, so now I have taken my general recursion and I've plugged in the second root, which is r2 equals negative half, and I get the following recursion. So I'm gonna simplify this a little bit. I'm gonna find common denominators in the numerator, um, but I can do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator of this by two. And furthermore, notice that these are gonna cancel out to zero because it's minus one plus one. So after multiplying the numerator and the denominator of this by two, Notice I'm going to get negative 2n minus 7 over 4n times a n minus 2. So that's what we have, and this should be of minus a half. So that's what we have for a n of minus half. We have that recursion. Okay, good. So now we can start um, plugging in some values for n and getting a feel for what's going on. So notice all the odd ends are gonna give us zero, so it only makes sense to do even ends. We have a zero is one, so let's look at a two. And I'm gonna leave off my of one half now just for brevity. So a of two, so that means I'm gonna plug two into this. So that's gonna give me negative. And notice I get uh, negative three on top. Good, and then on the bottom, I'm gonna get eight, and then I have a of zero, which is one. So that's all I have. Okay, great, and so now let's look at a four. So a four is gonna give me two negatives, which is gonna give me a positive. And so then we're gonna have, um, <clears throat> well, actually, let's 
Now let's leave the negative three eighths in there. That's actually pretty important. So we're gonna have negative negative. So that means we're gonna have negative three eighths. That's from the previous A2. Now we plug four in here and notice that's gonna give us one over four times N, which is uh, 16. Good, but now notice we can factor that out and that's negative three times one um, over eight squared times two. Okay, good. So let's uh, do one more and then we'll clean up the board and finish it off. So the next one would be A6. So let's see what we get for A6. So if we plug uh, 6 into here, we're going to get 12 minus 7, which is 5. So we'll get negative 5 over. We plug 6 into here, we get 24. Good. And now uh, notice the next thing that we have is all of this. So this is going to be times negative 3 times 1 over 8 squared times 2. And now the next thing I'm going to notice is that 24 is equal to 8 times 3. Okay, good. And that gives me some motivation for the following. A6 is negative, and then on the numerator we have uh, 5 times uh, 1 times negative 3. I'm going to put it in that order. And then in the denominator I have 8 cubed uh, times 3 times 2, which is 3 factorial. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up the board, I'm going to write down A8, and then from there we're going to look for a nice pattern. Okay. So we left off at this point. We had a2 was negative 3 and then 1 over 8 to the 1, 1 factorial. So I've like introduced a little bit of patterning here. a sub 4 is negative 3 and then 1 over a squared times 2 factorial. a sub 6 is negative 3, 5 times 1, 8 cubed over 3 factorial. Um, and then next, I won't work this out in detail, but I'll just jump to the solution, and this is A8 is the following. So A8 is negative 3, and then we have 9 times 5 times 1, all over 8 to the 4 times 4 factorial. So it looks like we're getting a power of 3 that is half of this even number, a uh, factorial that's half of this even number, and then notice we have this descending product on the top, and it's skipping 4 each time. So we have 5 times 1 here, up there we have 9 times 5 times 1, and so uh, in fact there's a notation for that and it's the following, so this is negative 3, 9 quadruple factorial. So that just means we're going from 9 to 5 and there's a distance of 4 between those. And then we have a 8 to the 4th, 4 factorial. Okay, good. So this gives us the following motivation. We have a2n is minus 1 to the n because notice our uh, negative signs are alternating. Um, oh, and I should say this one had a ne an extra negative attached to it. And um, this one also had an extra, extra negative attached to it. Um, okay, good. So we have negative 1 to the n, and then we have this is multiplied by negative 3. So this negative 3 is kind of like a, another part of it. And then finally we have 2n minus 7, this quadruple factorial. And that 2n minus 7 term comes from the recursion that we had written down before. And then finally, this is all over 8 to the n, n factorial. So that's a sub 2n, and that allows us to write down our solution as follows. So we have y2x minus half, which is the root, and the first two terms do not follow this formula, so we'll write those down separately. So we have x to the minus half, I'm going to factor that out of the whole thing, and then we have 1, and then we have minus 3 over 8, um, x squared, 
And then we have minus 3 and then times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n and then uh, 2n minus 7 double triple fa quadruple factorial and then 8 to the n n factorial x to the 2n and that's our final solution.